Hey fam, welcome to another Thursday night Bible study. I am so thankful and so grateful that God has placed the most incredible, incredible people that are walking this journey with us. We love you so much, Bill and I love you so much. And we are so, you know, so excited to be in this day and hour, walking this journey, running this journey with you guys alongside uh just love you all. We miss you all. Can't wait to be able to you know, catch up together and just, you know, see one another face to face. But you know what? I'm trusting and I'm hoping that it will be soon. So uh, before we begin, before we begin anything, let's just seek the Lord. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for every single soul, Lord God, that is joined tonight. Lord Jesus, I know, God, that nothing happens by coincidence, Lord God, that that, Lord, you are a sovereign God and it's your Holy Spirit that draws all men to you. Father, I believe that you've drawn every single person here tonight to be able to hear this word, Lord God, this specific word that you have for us, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that you would keep our hearts, Lord God, soft, that we would be able to receive whatever it is that you want to say, our minds open away, Lord God, with all distractions. Father, we come against distractions right now. And Lord, we pray, God, that you would have our full attention, our full attention in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you know what? I wanted to share a little video, just a quick video before we start of uh, Aviana. And it's just a short video of how she didn't want to get up one particular morning because she said to me that it was too cold and that she had checked and Siri had told her that it was just too cold. And But I had already been outside and it was so warm. I think it was already like 18 degrees. And I made her come outside and just see. And God really spoke to me through this little video because um, he showed me, you know what? Be careful, little ears, what you hear, because your Father up above is looking down with love. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Not everything that we're hearing. It's funny that he would have us uh, have a word two weeks ago about not everything you are seeing is how I see things. And now not everything that you hear is my voice. So let's just see little Miss Arvi and her illustration. Avi, what's the weather today? Avi, what is it? Cold, who told you that? Siri, when did you ask Siri? When did you ask her? Hey? Okay. Are you recording? Okay. Is it going to be cold or hot? Ten percent rain. Is it warm? Yeah. How do you know? It's warm out here. Say sorry, mummy. I will not listen to Siri. I will trust God. Amen. She's so cute. How often do we do that? How often do we just uh, just believe what we hear? Because sometimes it suits us. It suits our needs. I think Arby didn't really want to go to the park that day, so her excuse was, ah, it's too cold and I'm just going to bank on what Siri is saying. But it's a lot like us. And I think that's why we've got the word that we have tonight, that you know the Lord's really pressing into hearts and he's really pressing into the way that we think and and how we're receiving information and what we are really listening to because we're living in a day and age guys where there is a lot of deception there is so much deception that's in this world and it's in the church and I really believe that with this word God wants to free us he wants to heal us from any deception that we may have willingly or unwillingly fallen in so with the word, the word is titled, Turn off the voice, shut the door, and store oil. Turn off the voice, shut the door, and store the oil. You know, before I was about to uh, do this word, I, I was feeling a little bit uncomfortable because some of the information that I'm going to uh, present tonight 
maybe a little bit offensive to some people watching, but it's in no means or no shape, way or form to offend anyone. I'm bringing this just out of obedience to the voice of God. But uh, the Lord showed me an image of someone who was burning and as, and as though this word needed to be spoken because it was like there was a soul that was going to be saved from the fire. And I looked it up and it was so cool because this is what it says, Jude one twenty three. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I really hope uh, that this will save at least one soul, that this will uh, bring someone who's in living in deception out of that deception and bring them into a place of truth and, and freedom, exactly where the Lord has positioned you to be. So, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Matthew 24, take heed that no one deceives you. These, these are the words of Jesus Christ. He says, this is a warning. Many false Christs are going to come in in these last days saying that they have the so-called truth, right? So we need to be aware of the voices and the, and the stuff that we're hearing, whether or not it's really from God. But Jesus says, I have told you this in advance. Behold, I've told you this in advance. So there is a, there is a warning that the Lord is saying, you know what, don't just believe everything because it sounds good, right? Or if it sounds bad, don't believe it. Test everything according to his word. Uh, we know it doesn't take a genius uh, to work out that it doesn't take all of the, the preaching and, you know, the voices of the prophets and people with their dreams and visions. And, you know, that's the only thing that's on the internet right now to realize that we really, if we really are in, a, in an incredible time in history, uh, we've seen uh, so much, so much unfold just within these last two years, right? Things that I have seen that I didn't think would ever happen. Families, close family members who um, uh, are at angst with one another. There is a line that's definitely being formed and there is a divisiveness that is so, so tangibly heard and seen. And you, you can see it now even coming into the church and it'll probably come into the workplace. It's going to come out into the street. So there is a real spirit, a sense of spirit of, of heaviness, of oppressiveness, of fear, of darkness. And the Bible says that in the last days that that, that thickness of that spirit was going to get worse and that people would be even greatly deceived, like that they would fall more and more into deception. So according to Bible Proof and prophecy, things will get more intense. Jesus, Paul, and Peter, they all prophesied. They all prophesied of these days that we're living in, and it's its kind of exciting. I, I, I don't know, call me weird, but I, I think it's kind of exciting. Luke 10, 41 to 42, Jesus says to Martha, My beloved Martha, why are you so upset? You're troubled. You're pulled away by all of these many distractions. Mary has discovered the one most important thing. And she chose to sit at my feet. She's undistracted and I will not take that privilege away from her. Martha was upset with Mary because Mary was just sitting at Jesus' feet where Martha was consumed with all of the housework, the cleaning and, and all of that sort of stuff. But what the Lord was saying in essence in this story is that, you know what, the best place for any one of us to be right now is at his feet. That one thing will not be taken away from you. That one thing will prepare you to store up more oil. That's where the oil is at. The enemy, you know what? The enemy is banking on you to be like one of those five foolish virgins. He is banking on you to be lukewarm, complacent, and not take any of this stuff seriously. But I'm asking you, the Lord is speaking directly tonight to every single one of us. Store more oil. Turn off the voice. Shut the door and store oil. Living in these days, living in these last days, in this period of history where the church is, in, is on its last seconds, we need to be so guarded. People are confused. People are afraid. People are going to and fro looking for, for knowledge and for evidences and, and for stories and um, theories. But the Lord says that his people will his people will perish because of a lack of knowledge. Where does the Bible direct us to get that knowledge? Listen to what Jesus says in John 15, 26. 
But I will send you the advocate, the spirit of truth. I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. And John 16 verse 13 says, When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Where do we go to find out about the future? We go to Jesus. We ask him. He gives us his Holy Spirit. His Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. The reason why we get this knowledge or an understanding for prophecy is not so that we would be better debaters. It's not so that we would scare people, but it's so that it would equip us and it would prepare us so that we would know that we wouldn't go in blindly in this world, allowing the circumstances of the world to dictate to us what the story is, but that we would recognize what is happening because of what's already been revealed to us. Matthew 24, 44 is the backbone of all prophecy and I highly recommend that every single person who's listening tonight would memorize this one until the return of Jesus and it's this, you also must be ready at all times for the Son of Man will come when you least expect it. That is the backbone of all prophecy, that you would be ready, that you would be ready because he comes at a time when you least expect it. You know, in researching for the last days, it was really interesting. One of the main components that I saw come out time and time again was deception. Deception was huge and it was going to play a massive part. It said that it was going to be the greatest mark of the last days. But the Bible tells us to look at the Bereans and to be like the Bereans. They would listen to the teachings of Paul and Silas, but then what they would do is they would take everything that they had heard and they would measure it up according to the scriptures that they had to see if what they were hearing was true. Whatever it is that you're receiving, even right now with this word, you know, go and check it out in the Bible. I want you to do your own research and find out what is it that the Lord is showing me in this day and hour. Deception, what is the meaning of deception? It's just a concealment of truth. But you have to know the truth to be able to conceal it. And we know that there is one who knows that truth, who wants to conceal it, so it's the enemy. Be wise to his schemes. Don't be unwise. Okay, so how do we live in this world that Jesus and, you know, Peter and Paul told us would be ramped up in deception? How are we going to know? so that we're prepared and we're not deceived. Agape love. It's agape love. It's not a feelings kind of love with the Lord. It's a commitment. It's a marriage type of love with the Lord that says, you know what, I choose you. No matter what it is that I go through, Lord, I choose you. It's my commitment to you. That is intimacy love. That kind of love is where you store oil. That kind of love is what's going to keep you from being deceived. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, stay alert, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Principalities are working harder than they've ever before. We've got to understand that everything that we're seeing, it's not people. We've said it time and time again, but it's like we're getting annoyed at people and their views and their opinions and perceptions, whatever. It's not people. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers of dark places. For every single person that is listening, take heed and listen to what the Lord is saying. Deception is at the door. Maybe for some, maybe some are right in the middle of it right now. But for it to be a real deception, you're believing that you're actually okay. And tonight I pray that the Lord opens up our eyes to any one of us that has allowed deception to creep in. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5 to 10 says, Don't you remember that I told you about all of this when I was with you? And you know what's holding him back, for he can be revealed only when his time comes. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly. This is Paul talking to the church in Thessalonica, and he's talking to them about the deception that was already at play. He said, He's working secretly even now and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Who is the one that's holding back all of that mass deception? Who is the one that's holding back the plan 
of the enemy or, or allowing him to come out in full fruition, it's the Holy Spirit, it's the church, right? Listen to what verse 8 says, that man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and he will destroy him by the splendor of his coming. This man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit powers, signs, and miracles, and he will use every kind of evil deception. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. How? How is the enemy, how is the enemy able to fool many into destruction? They did not receive the love of truth that was able to save them. Remember that point, guys. They did not love the truth. They did not love and receive the truth that was able to save them. And what was God's response? How did God respond to those who did not love his word, who didn't receive his salvation? He sent them a delusion that would make them believe that which was false. Verse 11 says, So God will cause them to be greatly deceived, and they will believe these lies. Then they will be condemned for enjoying evil rather than believing the truth. You get what you ask for. I know, I know. It's like that. God is a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's patient, long-suffering and kind. But if you don't want salvation, he won't push that on you. He'll give you what you're after. So how can I love the truth? How can you and I love the truth? Well, we need to store oil because truth is a person and oil is found at his feet. When we fall in love with him, so much so that when he speaks to us through his word, it pricks our heart, it pricks our conscience and it causes us to change, right? Otherwise, if this doesn't take place, guys, we will be in a place that leads us into deception. Luke 19 says, Meanwhile, Zacchaeus, he stood before the Lord and he said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I've cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. This is how much Zacchaeus was impacted by the ministry of Jesus, the, you know what, just seeing him and being with him. And Jesus responded to him, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save that which was lost. You know, what was lost? What was lost in the garden? A perfect relationship between God and his creation. That perfect relationship that didn't require anything outside of their relationship with God. That's what the Lord has come to restore. When I read something in God's word and it's different to what I previously believed because of my upbringing or my culture um, or doctrinal teaching, what do I do? Well, you know what? When the Lord reveals it to me, I have to reject. I've got to reject everything else that I've allowed in. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, God's word trumps it every single time. He trumps it every single time. You want to stay out of deception? Stick to his word. Receive it because it's from him. God's spirit is in the world even right now and it's in the world to convict the world of sin and lead every single one of us into God's righteousness. It's his Holy Spirit that draws us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads and draws us all to repentance. So praise God that he's not left us just in our, in our own devices. But if your heart has become cold, if you're insensitive to the Holy Spirit, if you've become insensitive, then I really pray that tonight's Bible study will encourage you to go and be at his feet. Deception isn't worth it, guys. You know, none of us want to be here for the tribulation. It's not going to be good. It's going to be horrible. We are in the last seconds as the church age. So how do we avoid it? How do we avoid being those who are left behind? Every time I believe a scripture I read, I receive truth from the word of God. And I qualify. Now I'm qualified for receiving more truth. But every time I reject the truth, then I set myself up for deception. It's, it's the way that it works in the word. Little by little, God will reveal more and more of himself to me that is true in his word. 
no more deceptions. My mind becomes renewed. I'm no longer thinking in this way. Now I'm starting to think higher thoughts and my mind is uh, looking up into heaven. I'm no longer looking for, for the reasoning that comes from this world. And now I'm able to receive power from a real God who gives me his Holy Spirit. So I'm not serving a religion that looks religious but denies the power of God. I'm now encountering the real God of the Bible who empowers me with his Holy Spirit that gives me the strength and ability to be able to lay down my life and say, you know what, God, like what Bill was talking about last week, I love not my life unto death. It belongs to him. Can't do that, cannot do that unless the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Mark 4 verses 24 to 25 says, this is Jesus speaking, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even the little understanding that they have will be taken away from them. Imagine not spending that much time with your partner, with your husband or with your wife, with your friends, with your siblings, with your relatives, whoever it is. Imagine not taking the time to hear their heart, to hear what's on their mind. Do you know what's going to happen? It's inevitable. After a period of time, your heart will grow cold. It will grow colder to them. You know, something beautiful has been happening. And um, just with this whole lockdown period, I have really, really just um, seen this incredible love from my mother-in-law and it's been so amazing and um, and I was asking the Lord why why now why all of a sudden why now and he showed me it's because you're spending more time you're spending more time with her you're listening to her you're you're having conversations with her you're giving her that time and now intimacy is being built this is the same with Jesus and you know what the enemy is counting on that very move he's counting on you to not spend that time with the Lord, to be able to put yourself in a place of compromise and then you are no longer being convicted. You know, this is exactly the move that the enemy is counting on. He wants your heart cold from the Lord. He wants you distant. He doesn't want you spending time with him. He doesn't want you listening to his heart, listening to his words. He wants to keep you from that because he's setting you up for a compromise. And when you've set in that compromise, there's no longer conviction of sin. You know, you've allowed something else to come into your heart. And now what's happened is you're walking a life of deception, but it's not worth it. John 10 verses 1 to 5 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. After he gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. It's so beautiful. The sheep won't follow another shepherd's voice because they don't recognize it. And this is what the Lord wants for us. Remember, guys, Jesus is the gate. Those who come through him, through him alone, will be saved. The counterfeit doesn't care. He just comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus is the only one who prom promises fullness of life here and later on. In John 16, it says, John 16, 1, I have told you these things so you will not abandon your faith. There's that scripture again. We are hearing all of these things so that we will not abandon our faith. 1 Timothy 4, now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last days, some will turn away from their true faith. They will follow after deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. You know, what's really scary about this, this passage is written to believers, believers, and it's a warning to those who aren't walking in intimacy. If you're experiencing, look guys, I understand we all go through seasons of this where we're finding it sometimes hard to connect with the Lord or you know um, there is some sort of an obstacle or some sort of a hindrance I understand that but you know what if that's the case then right now is a time to do a spiritual heart check how do we do that let's listen to the parable of the sower and establish where our heart is all right so we know that the sower 
is Jesus. The seed is the word of God. And the different grounds in that parable are referencing to our hearts. So if you are have if you've got issues where you're hearing the word of God, uh, you're hearing sermons, you may even listen to a testimony, or a song or whatever, and it does absolutely nothing for you, then you have a condition which is called a hard heart. If that's the case, seek the Lord. Ask him to remove the hardness of your heart. Ask him to soften it. The Lord is faithful. He doesn't want you to remain in this way. No word can be even sown in that type of a state because the enemy comes in very quickly and he plucks it away. The second ground is a stony ground. This one is shallow. It's a shallow faith. How do you know if you've got a stony heart? If there are so many things, so many hurts and unforgiveness and and just so many obstacles in the way that prevent you from going deeper with God. There is no root for your faith. As soon as something happens and it and it costs you something, you abandon your faith. Ask the Lord to remove the stones out of your heart. If it's a thorny, thorny heart, what does that look like? It means that you're more concerned about the cares the desires of this life and this world. If that's the case, understand and know, my friend, that what the Lord says is true. Every word that he has spoken in his word will come to pass. He says that everything that we see now in this natural will one day pass away, but his word will not pass away. It's not worth it. Ask him to give you a heart that longs for him, that he would give you eyes to see those things that you're holding on to are not really worth you being left behind for. And finally, the good ground, the good heart is, you know that it's this, when you are experiencing intimacy with God, you gladly receive the word and you're seeing fruit. So irregardless of which state your heart may be in tonight, there is a cure. There is a cure. It is shut the voice, close the door and store more oil. Shut the voice, close the door and store more oil. Because they did not receive or love his word, God gave them over to deception. Take heed that no one deceives you. You know, when Jesus said these words to his disciples, take heed, that were, that meant in the original language a jar or a jolt. So they they were fully attentive. They were pressing in. They were listening to what the Lord was saying. He was saying this to his followers. They knew him for three and a half years. They walked with him and he said, take heed that no man deceives you. Really, you know what? Really, this word is totally up to you. It's totally up to you what you end up doing with it. Um, some people, and I've heard a lot of a lot of this lately, is that, you know what, I don't feel this or I don't feel that or I feel like this. Please don't trust your feelings. Your feelings lie to you. Remember agape, agape love. It's a marriage. It's a contract. It's a commitment. That's the kind of love that you are walking out of love that says, you know what, no matter what happens, I'm not letting you go. The enemy uses our human heart to to deceive us. So many, so many of us are lured into places that we never wanted to go. So many of us are lured into relationships we never wanted to be a part of. Why? Because we believe something in our heart, a feeling that was deceptive. Don't make agreements that the Lord hasn't asked you to. The New King James Version of Proverbs 28, 26 says that he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. And in Jeremiah it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who who can understand it? Well, the Lord can understand it. We can't understand it. We can't trust it. But whoever walks wisely will be delivered. Please hear me. Don't make your decisions. I'm going to reiterate that because we are very feeling feelings-based. Don't make your decision based on a feeling. Your directions are being prepared for you by the Lord. He's placed the lamp before your feet, one that will guide every single one of your steps. Where do we go? Where do we go? We don't trust our feelings. We go to, let's listen to Psalm 1. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Okay, so do we get our advice from the wicked? No. Or stand around with sinners. 
Do we look at what sinners do? No. Or do we join in with mockers? No. Verse 2, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They will be like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. If you don't want to be deceived, then get into his word. If you don't have a love for his word, ask that the Lord heals your heart. It's simple. It's all that we need to do. And you know what? The Lord gives us everything that we need. I heard the Lord just say this recently. I think it was a few mornings ago. I woke up and I was like, I can't, I can't, Lord, I can't. I don't know what I was going through. And he said, you can't, but I can. Go to him, go to him, be refreshed by him, sit at his feet until you until you get the answer or until you have the peace that you so long desire because he's able, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ever could ask, imagine or think. And he wants to, he wants you with him. He did everything that he could on his part, like Bill was talking about last week, so that you would be where he is. But it's up to you. The choice is yours. Our hearts do need healing and our hearts need guarding. Guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart. For this is where all issues of life stem from. The Bible tells us to guard our hearts. Why? Because these are the. this is the place where we either reject the truth of God's word, or we receive the truth of God's word. This is the place that the Lord has a connection with us. Take heed that no one deceives you. You know what, guys? I don't want any one of us left behind. The Bible continuously warns us of this mass deception. And we know that it's only going to continue to get worse. Right now, there are some restrictions that are starting to phase off and be lifted up. And, you know, for some, it's exciting. And we think, you know, there is a promise of like a future freedom, a future hope. But don't be deceived. The Bible tells us it will all get progressively worse, not to put us in a place of fear. And I saw this post the other day, and it was really cool. Uh, it was a picture, and it said, your freedom's not coming back, but Jesus is coming back. That's it. Keep that. Remember remember that. And that's what we're living for. So what do we do? What can we do? You know, when the Lord had Bill and I start doing this Bible study uh, lesson for our Thursday night group, he was really clear. He just showed me uh, like a dream and it was about putting him up and making sure that he was the only thing that we would ever preach about, teach about, making him central and that if we did that, he would draw many, draw many, many, many people to him. And we did that and we saw incredible moves of God. We saw an amazing move in the spirit. We saw healings, deliverances, um, prophecies. Like it, it was amazing. And I still believe that it's going to get even bigger and better. But after all of this came to a halt, I was like, Lord, what is it that you want me to do now? Um, and he said, I want you to lead. I want you to love. And I want you to feed my sheep. So it's like, wow, Lord. So all that I can give you guys tonight is the word that he has given me. The word that he has given me, a warning. Not for us to fall into deception because the spirit is out there to deceive as many as it can grab a hold of. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is to make a commitment to read the word. Not as something that you've added as a to-do list but that you would spend, I don't even know how much time we have. There is no more prophecy that needs to be fulfilled for us to be snatched away. So the time that we have left, that you would immerse yourself in the word of God, that you would store for yourselves up more oil, that you would fall in love with him, that you would be ready, that you wouldn't be shy or afraid when you see him appear in the clouds, that you won't draw away from him, but that you will run to him with a confidence. Can we trust in the word? Can we trust in his Bible? Yes. 3,800 times the Bible itself says that it's the word of God. It's the most provable book ever in history. There is no other book like it. There is no older, older book like this that has as many manuscripts that prove its authenticity. 
There is no other book out there that has claimed as many prophecies as the Bible has and 2,000 of the 2,500 have already been fulfilled. And Jesus Christ in his three and a half years fulfilled over 300 of them. You know what? It is a reliable source. You can trust in his word. And so that's why we're going to go now into future events. Even though we won't be here, it's really good to study prophetic events because we need to be aware of the atmosphere that we are living in. All right, we, we still don't want to fall into deception. Now, 27% of the Bible is biblical prophecy. So it would be really foolish to take out a third of the Bible just because it may seem a little bit hard. But I tell you what, Jesus is so good. He gives us his spirit that opens things up. He leads us and guides us into all truth. If you sit with the word, he will show you. He will show you different passages. He will show you the Bible always interprets itself. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient at their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and they will hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They will be reckless, puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like this. Wow. We are in the end times. Believing we're not, guys, this is the danger. If we believe that we are not in that last part of the church age, we are setting ourselves up and we may already be living a lukewarm Christianity. What does that look like? Just living for myself, not really concerned about souls, not really concerned about telling as many people that as I can about Jesus returning. We become asleep, indifferent, insensitive to sin, and even worse, may become cold in our hearts and the bible talks that says that in the tribulation before the antichrist will even come on the scene there will be a great falling away the rapture of the church is the next sinus event nothing else needs to happen Woo! can't wait um but we need to remember the backbone of all prophecy matthew 24 44 you also must be ready at all times, for the Son of Man comes when you least expect it. The tribulation will enter in immediately after the church has been raptured, after the church has been taken out, and it's there the Lord will deal with Israel for seven years. Okay? No one knows the day or hour. No one can tell you the day or hour that the Lord is returning, but he does let us know the season, and he's shown us the season that we are in. We are in summer. Matthew 24, 32 to 34 says, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. And I will keep going back to this because this is the, the central basis of why we believe that we are in the summer. Learn this parable from the fig tree, being Israel, when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, it's at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Which generation? The generation that was alive there to see that from happening. Amen. Israel has always been in the forefront of the world news. From the beginning of time, Satan has done absolutely everything to prevent this prophecy from being fulfilled. Let's have a look at a little bit of Israel's history. In the 1800s, the British severely restricted the entry of the Jews into Palestine. And then those who were living in Palestine were subject to violence and massacres by Arabs and mobs. During World War II, the Nazi regime, we all know about the horrible tragedy of the Holocaust in where Germany decimated 6 million Jews. Despite all of the hardships, on May 14, 1948, the last British forces left Israel and Israel was declared a modern state. It became a nation and thus the fulfillment of the prophecy was fulfilled. Luke 21 says, so keep watch, keep watch of what? Keep watch at all times, keep watch 
Don't be ignorant. Don't be asleep. Keep watch at all times and pray that you may have the strength to escape all that's about to happen and to stand before the Son of Man. Well, wow, we're going to go into, now we're going to go into what's going to happen. So if Israel and the fulfillment of that prophecy is not enough to wake you up about the end of the church age that we are living in, then maybe the prophecy of Daniel, Jeremiah and Ezekiel will, of an evidence of a world that's about to enter into a tribulation and one that we won't be around. Soon after the church is raptured, guess what's going to happen? There will be so much pain, so much sadness, so much chaos, so much confusion. There will be accidents from the, you know, from the sky with planes falling and from the buildings being um, blown up because of um, planes crashing in, cars, trucks. You, can, you know what? You don't even want to imagine it. I don't know who would want to be here, right? So there's going to be mass, 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 mass chaos. And then there is one who's already emerging, right, who's already in the world today, who's being prepared to step in to be the man of peace, right? He will offer, he will come in and offer the whole world peace. So it's going to be global. It's not just going to affect one country, one city. It's global. And this peace covenant will begin on the 70th week in the Daniel prophecy which is the final seven-year stretch before Jesus returns with his church. Amen. The Bible speaks of a third temple that is going to be built and one in which the Antichrist is going to be worshipped. We see in Daniel 9.27 the mention of this place. It says, The ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven, but after half this time, after three and a half years, he will put an end to all of the sacrifices and the offerings and as a climax to all of his terrible deeds. So that three and a half years won't be smooth sailing. There will be terrible deeds. He will set up a sacrilegious object that will cause desecration. Second Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 4 says, He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God and claim that he himself is God. Man, tell your family, tell your friends, you don't want them to be a part of this. The furnishings, the instruments and the vessels for the temple worship have already been created and are being displayed right now as treasures at the temple exhibition in Jerusalem. The Temple Institute also announced the birth of a flawless all-red heifer for the first time in 2,000 years. This heifer was born on the 28th of August 2018, which was an essential sacrifice that the Jews needed in the purification of this third temple. And isn't it crazy and funny that it's exactly 70 years from the fulfillment of Israel becoming a nation? In Revelation 13, we read a lot about a one-world rule through government, religion, and economy. I can't really say what NWO, so you guys know what I'm talking about. But guys, we need to discern that the times we are in, anytime something is being propositioned to us as global or as one, um, as all-encompassing or uniting, be careful. It's an agenda that is set, being set up by the Antichrist spirit. In in Revelation 13, verse 7, it says that the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. He's talking about the Israelite Jews that will be alive in that day and hour. And he says, And he was given authority to rule over every tribe, people, and language and nation. That is the entire world. And in verse 11, it says, I saw another beast come up out of the earth, and he required all of the earth, all of the earth and all of its people to worship the first beast. All of the earth, all of the people. And verse 16 says, He required everybody, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead to buy or sell. Without it, you couldn't buy or sell. Everybody, rich or poor, free or slave, everybody. It was an all-encompassing. It's here now. It's here now. And you know what? I almost feel like how the disciples would have felt or even some of the Pharisees when they were seeing Jesus uh, fulfilling a biblical prophecy, now seeing all of this stuff 
come into play of like, oh man, this is really happening and it's super exciting. So one, what are we seeing? A global one world government right now is emerging through this pandemic. As nations, they are, they're coming together and they're trying to come up a strategy that is united. A report of the Secretary General from the United Nations stated that their common agenda was a UN new order. New agenda for peace in the Middle East. It's a new world. A global vaccination which will be empowered by the WHO. All of this is just the formation of a world that leads to a platform for the Antichrist. The Secretary of the UN also said the following, In this spirit I promise a summit are for the future to forge a new global consensus on what our future should look like and what we can do today to secure it. Humanity has shown time and time again that it is capable of great achievements when we work together. This common agenda is our roadmap to recapture this positive spirit and begin rebuilding our world and mending the trust in one another that we need so desperately at this moment in history. Now is the time to take the next steps in our journey in solidarity with and for all people. Wow, sounds good, but keep listening to a one world leader will emerge, but the church will not be here when he is revealed. Three, a one way monetary system. And this one we may actually see. Okay. Four, a one world religious system. I never understood how I could be here on this earth and ever, ever witnessed a one world religion that would be all encompassing, all uniting, because religion just causes wars. People's faiths just, just divide and break, da da da. So, in, in doing this study, it just really just opened up my eyes. And I was, I was like the disciples, I was like, what? Ah, this is so close, guys. It is so close. Please, if you're listening to me, get ready, be ready. The Son of God, the Son of Man is coming at a time when you least expect it. When something becomes all-inclusive, remember this for now or for the future. When you see something and it's becoming all-inclusive, it means that there needs to, it needs to be based on a foundation that all the different parties can come to agreement with. So the narrative of the deception has to be something that isn't coming up against their belief system. So what is it? It's being hidden behind peace, love and unity, but without Jesus Let's have a look at how this has been coming into play. So the Pope has made peace with all these different parts of the world with different faiths and different belief systems. And let's just see how it comes into play. And, and you know what? Do your own study. I want you to discern, discern the times that we're in and, and discern the narrative, discern the language. So the Pope meets with Buddhist, Hindus, Jehi, Sikhs and Christians um, and he participates in a conference organized by his council. He said that one needs to thank God when religious leaders actively foster a culture of encounter by offering an example of fruitful dialogue and by working together effectively in the service of life, human dignity and the care of creation. By offering an example of fruitful dialogue. What is that fruitful dialogue if Jesus isn't in it? There is no fruitful dialogue. Pope Francis also met with an Iraqi leader seeking to build ties with Islam. So on October 31, 1999, the Lutheran Church and the Roman Catholic Church signed a declaration of the subject of justification and signed this, that glory is more important than any doctrine. Galatians 1, 8-9 says, Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of gospel than the one that we have preached to you. I say again when we have said before, if anyone preaches any other gospel than the one you have welcomed, let that person be accursed. Far out. Very clear. Doctrine is important. Very important in the eyes of God. Bible is clear in Romans 16, 17. It says, and now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things that are contrary. Don't, don't agree with things that are contrary to the word of God. Be careful what you come into agreement with. It says, stay away from them. If someone is telling you something on behalf of God and it does not line up with scripture, stay away from them. To the atheist and the scientist in a meeting, um, 
in the Academy of Sciences, the Pope said, the Big Bang that today is considered to be the origin of the world does not contradict the creative intervention of God. On the contrary, it requires it, he said. Evolution in nature is not in contrast with the notion of divine creation because evolution requires the creation of the beings that evolve. The Bible is clear. The last time I read Genesis, we didn't evolve. We were made in his image. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. I'm not saying this to offend anyone. Hear my heart. Just read your word. Just read your word. Get back into the word. Find out what the word of God says. And be careful with which agreements you are a part of. In a documentary, Francesco, which was released in October 2020, Pope Francis expressed support for same-sex civil unions and he said, Homosexuals have a right to be a part of a family. They're children of God and they have a right to be a family. Nobody should be thrown out or be made miserable because of it. And he created a civil union to protect them. In an evangelical charismatic conference with thousands of Christians, Bishop Tony Palmer stood before the congregation and he spoke these words. He said, on behalf of the Pope, that the word Catholic, the term Catholic, didn't eventuate out of Rome, but it came out of Constantine, and its meaning was simply universal. And he encouraged them that if they called themselves Christians, that they are Catholics, and they needed to come back to the way that everything should be. He failed to mention the worship of Mary. He failed to mention anything about Jesus, but he encouraged them to unite and to love and to live in peace. In 2019, a document on human fraternity for world peace and living together was signed by the Pope and the Grand Imam, and this was the pledge. In the name of God, who created all human beings equal in rights, duties, and dignity, and who has called them to live together as brothers and sisters to fill the earth and make known the values of goodness, love, and peace. Again, no mention of Jesus being the only way. No mention of having to be born again to even enter into the kingdom of God. What are we seeing? This is the deception of the last days and the trickery of Satan. It's exactly the same language as the one world government. Social justice, moral values, peace and liberty. There is no more exclusivity in this one world religion to salvation being through Jesus alone. But remember what the Lord spoke about the one who would go a different way outside of that gate there is no other way Jesus is the gate Jesus is the shepherd there is only one way and it's through Jesus he mentioned that all were redeemed through Christ's blood even atheists they didn't have to believe to be redeemed just do good deeds don't kill in the name of religion the bridges have already been set and now this emerging new world religion is coming through its sweet words an Abrahamic family house in Abu Dhabi is being set to be opened in October 2022 next year. It will include a synagogue, a church and a mosque and it's meant to be a beacon of understanding and peaceful coexistence inspired by the document on human fraternity. What are we to do? Guys, deception is real. It's so real. I pray that the Lord would find us ready and working while it's still day that he would find us busy in the harvest fields doing his work. Let's not get distracted of the world's opinions, of those who mock, of those who don't know God, of the wicked. Just go back to the psalm and read it. We get our instructions from the word of God alone and through being intimate with him, knowing his heart. When you know him intimately, you know what the Lord stands for. You know what the Lord hates. Jesus Christ and him crucified, this is your first and primary passion and this is how you want him to find you. In John 12, 44, Jesus shouted to the crowds, if you trust me, you are trusting not only in me but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world and not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth that I have spoken. Take heed, lest any man, woman, 
thing deceives you. The Lord is faithful and he's true. He's unchanging. He's an unchanging God. And if you've been praying and you can't see him working or moving, don't stop because he is faithful and true. Even if you can't see him doing something, he is doing something. It's just his nature. 1 John 4 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are really from God. For many false prophets have gone into this world. But do you know what, guys? You can't test something it, to be real or a counterfeit if you haven't experienced the real thing. You have to know the real thing. You have to know the real God of the Bible. You have to experience John 3, verses 3 to 5. What is that? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man get back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, I assure you, it is Jesus speaking, not Diana. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. Please don't neglect your Bible. It contains the written word. It is Jesus' love letter to you. Everything in it is what you need. Turn off the voice, shut the door, and store oil. Hi guys, how are you doing? My name is Daisy. Um, some of you may know me, some of you don't, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm here to share with you my testimony. Um, and I pray that it blesses you, but not only that, but that it helps you to be more aware and alert spiritually um, of what's happening in these times. So the main content of my testimony is that I actually almost got recruited into a cult without knowing. Um, and I'm going to say this, like no one gets into a cult saying, oh yeah, I just want to go and find a false you know, doctrine or I just want to go and get into a cult that's not how it happened more often than not it happens like without you expecting it you know it's always innocent the reason why i'm sharing this video with you is also that i can scare you <laughs> um, but it's to make you more alert and help you be more you know careful with what doctrine are you listening to who are you listening to are you praying are you just taking everything in that you're listening to or are you actually you know discerning for yourself not discerning based on what other people have told you um, and I think a scripture that gives me so much hope is first John chapter 2 um, verse 26 to 27 and it says I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true for the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know and what he teaches is true it is not a lie so just as he has taught you remain in fellowship with christ this scripture gives me so much hope because i know that i have been filled with the holy spirit and through this like that's all i need for god to reveal to me his word so i'm gonna share how i ended up in this organization i'm not gonna tell you the name of the organization because it's probably not gonna help you most of this organization and that specific one they didn't tell me like the name of the organization at first but i'll tell you how like they sort of recruited me and how they taught like what they taught and why you should be careful of such doctrine um i also say that i thought i was a strong christian i thought i was immune <laughs> i've never even thought about cults to be honest it was like the only thing that i was sort of careful of was like world and like the deception of this world you know like sexual immorality da, 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 da. you never really think that the devil could use the bible to deceive you yeah the bible many of you know i am a christian and have been you know practicing my relationship with god i've had encounters with god i've been filled with the holy spirit but yes guys i was also involved in this so around last year december um I got a random Instagram message of this girl who wanted to know more about my faith and me innocently I shared with her like I was engaging with her I was telling her how I grew my faith I have a relationship with God I seek him every day I pray and like the Holy Spirit helps me so I thought that this was just an innocent girl who wanted to know more about my relationship with God um, then she started asking me if we could do a Zoom meeting 
and just share more about our faith which i also did not really think there was anything wrong with that at this point i was thinking to myself this could be an opportunity that god is using you know to help me evangelize um throughout this experience one of the things that i've learned is saying that this could be god um does not mean that it is god okay and i feel like that's one of the main things that i did throughout this process that i could have avoided if you feel like something could be god don't just assume it's god because if you say oh this could be god and then go ahead with it that means you automatically assume that it is god you know if you say this could be god take some time and pray now my prayer it doesn't mean just pray like dear lord jesus it's not like those prayers over but take your time to pray about the spiritual matters you know don't just make decisions so what i should have done at this point was to pray about this it doesn't look like something to pray about but if i tell you the spiral of of months that i've wasted in this thing you would not believe it i innocently agreed to a zoom meeting with this girl um so in this zoom meeting she came with another guy they said that they were friends from uni i did not see it as a big deal said that oh let's do a bible study together in my head i thought that we were going to be studying the bible together like we get together we pray and then we read the bible together which was an idea i had in mind and then this girl sort of mentioned that oh we would have a teacher come and teach us and i remember going mm, well the bible does say that you will not need anyone to teach you when the spirit of truth comes he will lead you into all truth you know he will be your teacher even in this scripture that i just read for you it says the same thing I remember thinking, do we really need someone to teach us the Bible? I was coerced into it, and I will say I have this personality in me where I don't want to hurt people, I don't want to offend people, I don't want to be rude, which got me into trouble. And at this point, I'm like, a no is a no, and a yes is a yes. I can't be risking my spiritual life to please people. No. So we did a Zoom meeting with these two people. We did two Zoom meetings, and then the next Zoom meeting, they somehow brought this lady who they introduced as their bible study teacher the same thing happened i was like this could be god giving me an opportunity to be you know growing more in the word did i take my time to pray about this no i did not i sort of like assumed that this was god you know you have to make sure you pray and you hear god's direction you know because god is faithful to lead us yeah so this lady we started a bible study it was one day a week slowly became two days a week so they became three days a week i remember feeling very irritated like why do i have to be studying three days a week first of all it wasn't an informed choice i feel like you've coerced me or forced me into it but at the same time i was like this could be good so i did this bible study for 10 months and the shocking thing is that i did not realize i was in a cult honestly i did not realize that i was heading into a cult um these people are very aware that you know if they tell us outright who they are we're obviously not going to believe them so they come and entice you slowly by slowly and slowly by slowly you fall into their trap before you know it you believe in this doctrine so much you even like stop believing in things that you believed in for so very long you know slowly by slowly they taught us about parables in the bible and it sounded so profound it sounded so new like no one is talking about this they started to talk about the book of revelation which really caught my attention because no preachers like very few preachers are talking about the book of revelation and how it's going to be fulfilled you know and at this point i wasn't going to any other bible study because i had choir practice on thursdays and so i was like oh like we're learning a lot um it made me feel like i really understood the parables of the bible it's true the bible is written in parables in some way but they sort of make it look like everything in the bible is a parable including genesis including revelation slowly by slowly i was like wow i'm learning so much i never knew these things blah 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 um like it just became something that i was really devoted to and i was studying the bible three times a week and i honestly thought i was growing closer to god you know slowly by slowly they started to tell us that you know god is not working with christianity anymore um god is working with these people now them you know they don't say directly but they tell you we have this revealed word you know we understand the meaning of the parables we understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven christianity doesn't you know at the same time there's a lot of pastors who are sinning there's a lot of pastors who are teaching false doctrine which that doesn't 
doesn't mean that God is in sovereign in God's word stands, you know. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, it's true. Like Christianity is messed up. Like these people are not even telling us the truth. You guys have the truth. I became so devoted to this thing, you know. They taught us so many things, and I, I thought I was wise. They told us to leave church, guys. <laughs> you don't believe it, but I left my church for this group. I stopped attending any other Christian Bible studies for this group. I left my church choir for this group. I genuinely believed that I had the truth. Um, if God allows me, I will share a more detailed version of this video um, on my YouTube channel. And maybe you guys can watch because I can't really explain the nitty gritty of it in a 15 minutes video. Um, but I will say I was so sorry for this. And I remember even praying for my family who are all like born again. But I was like, Lord, please help them. They're in, you know, they're trapped. They don't understand the truth. You know, they don't believe in you, Lord. Blah, blah, blah. Like I genuinely was convinced that Christianity was a scam. I stopped like believing in dreams. I stopped believing in visions. Like I who have prayed for people, I who have spoken in tongues and expressed the power of God. I stopped speaking in tongues because they say that everything in the Bible is a parable. So speaking in tongues is a parable. I, for the first few months, is very sound doctrine. They teach what normal pastors would teach. But as you go on, it starts to become fishy. But by this time, you're already sold. And it's sort of a mind game where they sort of tell you like the disadvantages of being a Christian so that you can see that it's true. God is not with Christianity anymore. But that's not the truth, you know. They don't tell you exactly what they're all about until you finish the 12 month course. And by the time you finish it, you're brainwashed, you know. They mirror the Old Testament to the New Testament, like how Jesus came to bring salvation. They say that salvation is not enough. Like, they don't say it like that, but they say, like, there's more. You don't just get saved by believing. There's more. You need to believe in the fulfillment of the prophecies of the New Testament. You need to. It sounds so profound and I fell for this trap. Guys, I stopped praying because I was like, which God am I praying to? The God of Christian. God is not with Christians anymore, but I used to pray as a Christian. So should I pray in this way? Like I was just so confused. I couldn't read the Bible because I thought I don't want to. They put such a fear in you of adding or subtracting to God's word. They make you believe that everything they're telling you is God's word and everything else is from Satan. You ask them questions like, oh, what about the miracles I've seen as a Christian? They will tell you, you know, Satan can also perform miracles. Like the troubling thing about all this is that these people, they don't use any extra book. They don't use a book that has been written by, you know, their leader or whatever. They use this Bible, but they misinterpret it. And because I will admit, I thought I knew the Bible. And the fact that they would read scriptures I'd never read before also made me think, wow, I'm learning so much. And I guess that's also another reason why I was so trapped into this. Guys, you need to read the Bible for yourself. Like this is that the Holy Spirit has taught me before. And I forgot all these things. Slowly, without realizing it, I put the Holy Spirit aside. I I feel so, I feel so bad. But at the same time, I'm just so grateful for God's grace, you know, and for God's mercy. I remember like even sharing um, this word with <laughs> my family who are also Christians and we would sort of clash because they would sometimes not agree with what I'm telling them, you know, but I would also feel like you guys don't even know, you don't know the truth, you guys, me, I found the truth. <laughs> So they sort of build up on this idea of a promised pastor, but they don't tell you who this promised pastor is. They, you know, misinterpret the book of Revelation. They use scriptures. They tell you to put God first. So God is there, like everything. You know, which we do these things in Christianity. We put God first. They tell you to prioritize God. Come to class. If you don't come to class, you're not pleasing God. Blah, blah, blah. You, you like really feel like you have to do this. At this time, I was sold for this teaching. I stopped listening to preachings. I started feeling uncomfortable being in Christian gatherings. Me, I stopped feeling comfortable being like near God. I was like, they tell you like, you know, Christians are, when Christians cry, when they're worshiping, even people who go to opera theaters, they cry. And I'm like, bro, I have experienced the power of God. I forgot all about that, guys. I forgot all about that. Um, I ended up, you know, thinking like I should go on. And find more sermons about what they're teaching.
teaching because I feel like because I can't read the Bible anymore and because I can't like listen to preachings from other pastors I need to at least see if they have any content on their YouTube channel that like or if they have a YouTube channel for me to find scriptures they would always discourage us from going on Google to search them they would always say that the people will call them a cult even Jesus was called a cult I'll tell you they had a scripture for everything and I genuinely went on youtube a few days ago i searched and i was looking i they told me who they were because i had shared in this bible study with two other people so i think they sort of saw that i was serious and i had believed it you know if you introduce someone to it it definitely means that you believe it and so i went and searched on youtube they told me their name but they didn't tell me about this promised pastor or whatever and when i went to youtube i saw this girl had on that video and when I watched it is when I realized guys this was a cult they had proved like they had shown themselves as so profound they had shown themselves as so wise they are the only people who understand revelation and I was shocked to realize that they were actually leading us to a promised pastor it was a man a mere mortal like you and me who's supposed to be the promised pastor who has received revelation and if you're not with them you will receive salvation i felt cheated i felt guilty i felt disappointed in myself at the same time i felt so grateful to god and i also felt very humbled very humbled as i said the bible says in matthew 24 in the last days that people will be deceived even the elect guys i don't want you to to be be listening to anyone or think that you know everyone else has the answer but the whole
care about and listen to people who want you don't ignore them you know and this is a testimony that i'm hoping god will allow me to share um in full about what we learned and about you know the confusion that we learned and how it sounded almost true and i pray that you guys will be one i pray that you guys will be alert and aware and you know god is faithful to keep those who trust in him that's my prayer for you um feel free to reach out i don't know if i should plug my instagram <laughs> Um, you can ask Diana for my number um, if you want to have a chat to me about that. I hope you guys have.